Welcome back to another episode of Marketing Girly by Sky Society. Today, I am chatting with Laura Statuti. She is the Senior Manager of Fan Engagement Marketing at the NFL. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. We are going to jump into a lot in this episode. We're specifically going to focus a lot on getting started in sports marketing if you don't have any experience or connections in the area, and also a lot on job application tips um, for you know recent graduates or for women who are newer in their career. So I'm going to jump into a lot in today's episode with Laura. But before we jump into all that fun stuff, Laura, can you tell me a little bit about who you are and what you do? For sure. Yeah. Um, so as you mentioned, Laura Statuti, uh, Senior Manager of Fan Engagement with the NFL. Um, I've been with the league. I'm going into my fourth season. Um, I started back in July of 2021. And uh, before that, I had been with NBC Sports for almost five years. Um, you know, sports has been a big part of my life. I played sports in college and I always knew that was something I wanted to work in. So um, I found a way to do it. And it wasn't maybe the most traditional process, but it worked. So um, I'm always happy to share my journey with people to help them out. We love a non-traditional career journey on Marketing Girl. So <laughs> we're here for it. Um, what sport did you play in college? I played softball. Oh my gosh. I, I played softball yeah. like early in my, like when I was younger and I absolutely loved it. I did like, I was pitcher and I remember just being, it's such a fun community to be a part of um, mm -hmm. being in softball. What was it like though? Cause I know when you go into college level, when you're like young, like I was playing it, it's like all fun, all games. Then when you, once you, I feel like take it to high school's like a next step and then college is a lot cause you're doing classes and doing yes. school in college. Was it kind of an insane schedule that you had to manage? Yes and no. I think it was a really good balance. I played division two, so it wasn't, you know, as intense as a division one program, but it still was, you know, very serious. Um, I played a lot of competitive ball before college too. I, I started actually really late. I was a big soccer player and I thought soccer was uh, my sport. Yes. Um, so I was, I was from a big baseball family. My brother was a really good pitcher and um, I always played with him in the yard. So like I had the, the fundamentals and things like that. But um, as soon as I tried out for the team in middle school, I was like, this is my sport. I should have been playing this originally. So I really fell in love with it and just jumped, you know, headfirst into it. Um, I started playing competitively. I was on multiple travel teams. I ended up playing on a, a collegiate showcase team. So playing, in, you know, all over the East Coast, up and down um, and showcases and things like that. So I was kind of used to that because I played year round already. So I was used to having that much commitment and every single weekend I'm in a new place playing. So um, it was somewhat of an easy transition going into college. Um, I think playing sports in college was a really great way to keep you balanced between, you know, it's the first time you're on your own and you're, you're being, you know, learning to be independent and things in college. And it really kept you more responsible. I think it, like, you had these, uh, you I did three days, some of my, <laughs> some of my career in college. Um, so you really had to, you know, make sure to get your bet, get to bed at a responsible time and get up early and, you know, make sure to get your work done because you have practice two and a half hour practice in the afternoon. So I think it was really helpful to keep me, you know, just balanced in college and making sure I'm sticking to a schedule and, and getting everything done. So um, I actually think it was more beneficial than anything. Yeah, I've, I've had girls ask me like, do I, you know, do I put that I was on a sports team in college on my resume and, and, you know, how do I, I say yes? About it? Yes. I a hundred percent because it teaches you so many incredible skills. Like you, you mentioned time mm -hmm. management, um, leadership, community. Yep. I mean, there's so many things that go into that. And I think a lot of employers also respect that. I, I knew an employer one time that would only hire student athletes because he's like, they have a work ethic, like no other. They do. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree. I think it's, it's, you know, obviously it's not going to be the main part of your resume, but it's something you should mention down at the bottom. It shows that you were involved and you didn't just kind of cruise through college. You actually, you know, like you said, you had a work ethic and, and people could trust that you would bring that into the workplace too. Absolutely. Okay. So one thing I know about your family or childhood is that both of your, neither of your parents were in sports marketing, they were first responders or had more physical jobs. And mm -hmm. you mentioned that kind of early on, you really knew that you wanted to work in sports. You didn't exactly know where, and you, you, know, you couldn't really go to your family to kind of help you out. So how did you start to navigate, you know, building a career within sports without really having anyone to kind of turn to, to show you the ropes? Yeah. Um, so even back to picking out colleges, I, I think I, the biggest mistake I made was focusing on softball. I was like, I want to play. I love sports. You know, I didn't really focus on what should my major be? You know, I knew that kind of 
things that I liked. I knew I loved to be the more creative side of things. I knew marketing was probably the route I was going to go. But outside of that, I was too focused on selecting a school for softball, which was not my best decision. Um, but from there, you know, my dad, uh, so as you mentioned, my dad's been a first responder for well before I was born. Um, he's a fireman. My mother was in realty. Um, my, my older brother's also a fireman. I just have a lot of first responders oh in my, my family. Yeah. Um, my dad owns an auto shop. He's owned it for over 30 years. Um, so, you know, like you said, really hands-on jobs. And so they didn't exactly know this world. And so I was kind of like, okay, I have to figure out how to get into this world, what goes on. Like, I, don't, I, I kind of... Well, I was lucky in a sense that I had a lot of family friends that kind of worked in these worlds. I had fr family friends that worked high up in Verizon. I had my aunt who worked high up in Amex. Um, so I kind of relied on them not only to, you know, help me through my resume, help me work through these things, answer questions I had. Um, but it required a lot of research on my end too. So I did know I wanted to work in sports, but I mean, I didn't even, even before I thought I wanted to work in marketing, I was like, Pers or uh, physical therapy or something like that, like athletic training. I was like, that sounds great. I would love that, you know, on the field at the games. And then I learned that it was a program that they they accept about seven students a year. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> and science was not exactly my strong suit. So I was like, maybe not the right path for me. So that's kind of when I leaned more into my creative side. And I was like, maybe marketing in sports makes more sense. So um, I ended up, I started with a degree going towards my degree in business. Um, I quickly realized it wasn't really my thing. You know, business, I'm more, like I mentioned, I'm more of a creative person. So I was like, okay, I had already gotten a decent amount of business courses in. Um, so I ended up making business my minor. And then I switched over to communications as my major because I had already taken a decent amount of classes. And I was like, not exactly marketing, but they kind of work hand in hand. So ended up as a corporate communications major with a business administration minor. Um, and with that, even when I was graduating, I was like, what do I want to do? I have no idea. Um, you know, I, again, wanted to work in sports. So I immediately started looking there. Um, I had a good friend and actually a past teammate of mine who worked for a baseball team back um, near my hometown um, up in Connecticut. And I saw that they had some openings and I was like, okay, it's not exactly what I'm looking for. It was actually a sales position um in the box office and I was like okay definitely not a salesperson but it's my foot in the door in a sports industry in a sport that I love so I said let's give it a shot I applied it was an internship um applied for the internship and ended up getting it um I actually found out two days before I graduated that I got it so I was kind of terrified that I was going to graduate without a job um but I was able to tell my parents on graduation day that I did have a job which is really exciting um so you know I got there I was really fresh coming in learning about the team learning about the inner works of the, the box office and selling tickets and birthday parties and big groups and stuff like that. And, um, you know, very tedious job. Um, you have a lot of cold calling, a lot of, you know, trying to get groups to come in and camps and things like that. So not exactly the most fun thing, at least for me, but I found opportunities where I could kind of show my skills and where I thought I shine. Um, you know, we had theme nights. I was like, can I make a flyer and we can post it here? Or can we reach out mm -hmm. to groups to do this? Or maybe convince based off the theme of the game that night, convince different groups. And that ended up really working out for me because I had kept coming up with ideas and different things that we could do. And they kind of saw that that's where I was better off than, yeah. you know, exchanging money at the window. Um, <laughs> and I uh, ended up moving into a marketing role there after my first season. Um, that so is from so there on out. Yeah, it was very strange, but it worked out very well. <laughs> and for you um, to like lean into that, because you mentioned you're like, I, I really like the creativity piece. And that first role <laughs> like didn't really give you so much opportunity there. But there was this kind of like little piece where you're like, I'm going to lean into that. I'm going to show them that I really excel yeah. here and lean into that marketing side. And I love that of like turning in, you know, turning an opportunity that maybe isn't exactly where you want to be, but very, very close and then being yep. able to kind of pivot and really showcase your marketing and you know creative skills to kind of then turn that into a marketing job. That's incredible. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I ended up, um, I was still doing some box office stuff, but I was more so was leaning, they were leaning on me for, um, you know, marketing for the events themselves, but also I was, I landed in a, kind of a sponsorship role. So um, designing uh, proposals for different partners based off of what they were looking for, what their budget was, you know, you could have a, um, you know, a sign on the scoreboard or on the concourse or 
um, and then actually helping sometimes design the signs for them and things like that. You know, the beer garden, helping the the brewery build out the, the beer garden and things like that. So definitely more of my realm. Um, not exactly what I was looking for, but again, I was like, I'm working for a baseball team and helping design signage around the stadium. Like, this is awesome. Um, this is much closer to what I wanted to do. Um, being that it was like a low level baseball team, you are not only just doing your job, you're doing a little bit of everything. Um, <laughs> But that's something, you know, I'll lead into later, but I, I think it was the best decision I ever made because of the experience I got. And I was then able to use that in other job interviews and say, well, I worked 80 hours a week and I, you know, did everything from booking groups to selling sponsorship packages to putting new sod on the field to being the mascot some days. Like, oh my God. I was very well-rounded because of that job and because of everything I did there and I learned there. And I'm not afraid of hard work. You know, I just, I always use that ter- that that sentence in my interviews. I'm not afraid of hard work. I worked 80 hours a week, sometimes 22 days straight. That's how it is with a baseball team. Um, and I think that really, really resonated with people in interviews because um, that ultimately led to my job at NBC Sports. Um, but I think, you know, while it wasn't the most ideal job, it helped me. I wouldn't be here today where I am if I hadn't had that job out of college. And it got my foot in the door in sports, which is what I wanted and helped me lead to where I am. So I think that was really my biggest first step. And that was, I think the best decision I made. And I was, I took a chance. I took a chance with an internship that barely paid, but it paid off in the end. So I think that would be my first piece of advice is if you know the field you want to be in, even if it's not exactly the job you're looking for, just go for it. You don't know what could happen. You don't know where it could lead you. So definitely give it a shot. I love that story, Laura. And I feel like you summed it up perfectly right there with, I think sometimes you want to work in sports marketing and it's like, well, I'm not going to be successful unless my first job out of college is at the NFL. And then I'm a mm-hmm. success. And if anything else, like, you know, I, I don't want it or that's not going to be it. And so one of the beauties I love on the podcast is like really getting to show the story. Cause I think it's really easy to look at someone that has that, you know, you went to, uh, was it NBC sports? after yeah after NBC that after. Yep. Mm-hmm. and then NFL like those are incredible incredible companies and opportunities but you you definitely put in the work beforehand and you had to mm-hmm. take those kind of steps to get there and I and I, I love being able to kind of show that and you know like you mentioned like I'm not afraid of hard work I think that's an incredible mantra <laughs> to kind of carry with the you. great line in an interview <laughs> yes yes I'm sure employers love hearing that they love it <laughs> okay so uh Talk to me then about kind of your transition over to NBC Sports. Absolutely. Um, so I had been actively looking one, you know, working at a team that's below minor league, but it's kind of a strange league. It was called professional baseball. Um, obviously, pay's not great. You know, as I'm getting older out of college, I need to move out and find somewhere to live. I needed a better paying job. Um, but I also wanted to just see what other opportunities were out there. Um so I had been looking, I think, I think I had initially seen the job on LinkedIn um, and it was a, specifically an email marketing role for NBC Sports. And I had never in my life envisioned being an email marketing person. I never was like, that sounds so fun. Like that sounds like the job I want, but it was a job in a big industry in the sports world. It was close by, it, it almost seemed too perfect. And I was like, it's something I can do. You know, I thought back to my college classes and courses I took. I took a web design class where I was learning HTML. I took Photoshop. I took stuff that I could then learn for this role. And yes, there were certain things in that job description. I was like, no, I don't necessarily know HTML that well or this or that, but those are things I can teach myself. And I knew that I could teach myself. Um, And so when I had applied for the role, I immediately started doing my research. I was writing notes on HTML. I was anything within that job description I was basically studying before I even got to the first interview or even had the first phone call with HR um I think that's a huge point that I think anybody should do like if I interviewed with FanDuel once and I didn't know that much about sports betting so I'm doing my research and like on the first I think this was the first time I got caught in an interview where I felt like I didn't do my homework and he asked me some sports betting terminology and I just absolutely whiffed and I just But then on the next interview, I had done my homework in between. I knew that terminology by heart, the next interview. And he asked me those questions again and I knew it. And he's like, you did your homework. And I was like, I did. And that made a difference. I ended up, they offered me that job. I didn't take it, but I did get offered that job after because that's what they look for. They want to see that you have enough drive 
to go out and learn and you want to learn in this role. That's what they want to see. So with NBC, I think the biggest things, yes, I didn't have a ton of experience in email marketing. I had overseen some of the stuff with the, the baseball team I was working for. Um, and I had familiarity with HTML. I didn't, you know, I didn't lie and say, I know HTML. I said, I'm very, I'm familiar with it. I, I've taken web design courses. Um, and then I also just spoke to my passion. I think the biggest mistake I think people can make is if you are applying for a job and there is a place to submit a cover letter and you don't do it. I think that's a huge miss. I think a lot of people don't agree. I personally think that's the place where you can shine and you can show your personality. The amount of resumes, I mean, a lot of times with these bigger companies, they're just looking at your resume. They're not looking at anything else. And they look at how many resumes a day, hundreds, maybe thousands, who knows, depends on the size of the company. But I really, really, really truly think that your cover letter is where you can show your personality, show your passion and show them that you want this job. Put in information about the company itself, show that you did your homework. I really think that's your place. So I am very, I very strongly um, suggest that you do them. Wait, we, we um, gotta, just, let's let's pause there for like a quick second because I, I know you mentioned you have like a little secret template to cover letters and how I you do. teach them. So um, well, first of all, on that point of like submitting cover letters, it is interesting because people kind of go both ways, but I'm mm -hmm. in more in your camp, especially if you're newer to your career and you're trying to do yep. anything you can to stand out. If they put an option for it, that means that they're considering it. And mm -hmm. like, if it's optional, like you should do it. Right. So I agree with you there, but I'm super curious on kind of how you approach it. What advice do you have for writing a cover letter that stands out and that's creative or any tips you can share there? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I, to this day, still use the cover letter template that I learned in college. I think the most influential class that I took in college was my business writing class. My teacher was very tough. She was extremely tough, but she knew what she was talking about. And she would put your resume up on the board in front of everyone and she would just tear it apart. Oh my gosh. Absolutely <laughs> tear it apart. And it was terrifying to go to class every day, but the amount that I learned in that class is... I. I I truly, I use it to this day. Um, so she had worked so closely with us on cover letters and resumes um, throughout the semester. And the cover letter template was something she really, really, really focused and honed in on. And she would actually pull job applications, real ones, um, and have us pretend to apply to the jobs and write cover letters. And then she would tear it apart. The biggest, biggest suggestion she always had was you take that job description, whether you want to print it out, highlight it on your computer, whatever you need to do, you need to know it backwards and forwards, know what they're looking for, know what stands out to them, what makes you stand out and highlight sentences that you can relate to. So actually what I do now is I use different colors. I'm a little OCD. I use different colors. I say, I highlight a certain color. If I have that skill, I highlight in another color if I it's something I'm passionate about or I want to learn about. And then I use that and I go back when I'm writing my cover letter and I use the colors to help me build out the cover letter. So, um, you know, early on back when I was at NBC, I would use, you know, when I didn't have a ton of experience, I would speak to my passion about sports. I spoke to specific things about NBC sports and um, the sports that they had because they had some very niche sports between Premier League soccer NHL hockey, Sunday night football, um, you know, really showed that I did my homework on the company. One is a huge thing, but to make sure you're talking about yourself enough, not to a braggy point, but to a point where you show that you have a great work, work ethic, um, that you're really, really, really passionate and you want this job and just make yourself stand out. Think of ways that you can stand out against another uh, candidate. So obviously, you know, your typical template would start with your name. Um, you know, if you're Fresh out of college, I would say within the last couple of years, I would start with where you graduated from, what your degree was in, especially if your degree is related to the field uh, that you're applying for, the job you're applying for, um, and then go specifically into the job. Pull out sentences from that job description and put them directly in your cover letter. Also do the same thing with your resume. If, there, if you have a job that has like for the baseball job I worked in. If I had anything somewhat related to what was in that job, I then would move that bullet up to the top. Even if it wasn't the thing I did the most at that job, I would highlight that at the top because that's gonna be what they see first. So you should have a separate resume and cover letter for every job you apply for, and you should customize it specifically for that job. And then again, do your homework, add in extra things that aren't in that job description that you can find out about the company. So for example, I had a friend that worked for NBC Sports I reached out to her. I said, hey, is there anything I should know about the company that I could use? You know, if you do your research, even if you don't know someone who works for the company, reach out on LinkedIn. 
I can't tell you how many people reach out to me on LinkedIn and ask things and want to just talk on the phone for five minutes. And I'm happy to do it because those people are doing their homework and they want this job and it shows that they want the job. So I'm always happy to talk to people when they do that. Um, but yeah, those are my biggest recommendations for cover letters and just end strong. I always say, end the cover letter like you're you know you're gonna have a conversation with them like I look forward to speaking with you I think I would be a great fit for the role you know make sure you're mentioning the company and the position multiple times so they don't just think it's some generic blanket cover letter um I would say those are my biggest pieces of advice for a cover letter I know it's probably a lot but it really really comes in handy I think that's incredible. And I love how you're leaning on your preparation for the role and how important that is. And I think it's oftentimes overlooked. Um, I think now there's also a lot of AI tools that make it a lot easier. Like now you could also like copy and paste a job description into ChatGPT right. and ask ChatGPT, like what are the keywords used most frequently? Also, I'm sorry if there's like some loud noise behind me and my apartment's going crazy. I can't hear it actually. Okay, perfect then. <laughs> Amazing. I got a good mic. Um, but I think that's super, super, super important. And and there's a balance because I think it can be really intimidating. Like, oh my gosh, I have to customize every single resume and cover letter. Like this is going to take me hours. Um, mm -hmm. But if, the more you do it, like anything, you pick it up like a skill and it becomes a lot easier Absolutely. and bigger for you. Like the first couple are going to be like cumbersome and hard and tedious. But then the more you do it, you're kind of going to get the hang of it. Um, but I, I just love so much how you mentioned, like really look at the job description because they're giving you the answers. They're like, they're, it's like if there's you. a test, mm -hmm. those are the answers. They're like, this is exactly mm -hmm. what we want. And like you mentioned, you're like, okay, I may, you know, reorder a bullet point. Sometimes I even teach um, our students like a, in a, a job description, they may talk a lot about content calendar creation, for example. And you may mm -hmm. have experience doing that, uh, creating content calendars, but you worded it differently in your resume. Instead, you kind of talked about how you created social media content. Yep. You don't really actually mention that you manage content calendars, even though you've done that. And it's really kind of, those are small little tweaks. And if you kind of comb through the job description a lot, it can completely transform your resume and your odds of getting an opportunity. Yeah. And I think the big, that's such a good point, you know, because it does become so tedious to do this every single time, but you'll get to a point if you're applying for jobs in the same realm, you'll almost have templates for each type of job and you mm -hmm. then you're only making small tweaks. So it's worth it yeah. to do the work at first. And then you have these templates you can work off of. I help my husband with this stuff all the time. He works in a sports field too, but not in marketing. He's a coach and um, he does, you know, personal training and things like that. And sometimes the coaching should be first. Sometimes the personal training should be first. It's always dependent on the job. So we have different templates for depending on what he's applying for. So um, the templates really come in handy. I, I save all of them on my Google Drive and I just go back to them and, and reuse them. So you're not always starting from scratch. That's a really good point because you can even have, I know like when I was younger, I was between marketing and finance. So I had like a marketing resume and finance resume, but it can mm -hmm. even be as nuanced as you're in marketing, but you're applying for an email marketing role versus a social media role versus right. an SEO role. And you can even kind of have them customized like that. Correct. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Um, Super interesting. So let's go back here. So you're going into NBC again. You did not have an email mm -hmm. marketing experience before. You're spending some time customizing your application. So how are you able to successfully land a role as an email marketing coordinator at NBC Sports without much email marketing experience? Yeah. So I had learned actually through the interview process that this was not only the first time, I mean, it was the only first, it was the first time they had ever had an email marketing person. I had learned that they, when they were sending emails, which for a big company, this is very surprising, they were actually sending it over to someone on the other side of the building in like research or something. They just happened to know HTML and they would say, this is what I want. And he would send it back and they would send it. I was like, that is oh, the crazy thing I've ever gosh. heard. So I was like, they desperately need someone for this role. I know, especially at my age, you know, I was still only a year or two out of college at this point. Actually, I was only a year and a half out of college at this point. And I was like, at my age, they're going to be very hard to find someone who knows HTML. So I was like, I don't think it's make or break that I know it by heart. I think what they're looking for is that I want to learn it and I'm, I'm going to learn it. And I can just show my basics. Like I even brought my HTML notes with me. And I was like, I know this about HTML, like things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so even though it wasn't, I wasn't super knowledgeable about it, I did everything I could to show them that I will do anything to learn it. Um, I used, again, my experience with the baseball team and the hard work and the working crazy hours. 
to show that I was not afraid of doing the work. You know, that was, a, I think, a big selling point for them. Again, they knew I was really young and still fresh out of college, so I wouldn't have had a ton of experience yet. So I think that's really what helped me stand out in that role um, because it was only a day later after my interview that they had offered the role to me. And I was like, I was super surprised because I was like, wow, I don't, you know, email marketing is pretty new to me, but I think one, they're so desperate to have someone in this role, but two, I think I proved to them that I want it and I was passionate about it. Um, so yeah, I got in that call the next day and I started, I think, um, a week and a half later. Um, and I stayed there for almost five years. Um, I had worked my way up. I started as an email marketing coordinator. Um, and actually a huge thing, which is probably a good, uh, note for, people new into the into their careers my manager so my manager was the digital marketing manager so the only she didn't know html she didn't know anything about email marketing so it was all on me but she handled all the digital marketing for all sports um the way marketing was broken out in mbc sports was into buckets so there was like um you know bucket one bucket two bucket one was um nhl hockey Premier league soccer bucket two was you know, Sunday night football, NASCAR, and then later on IndyCar. And then we had an Olympics bucket, but my team was all, all sports. So we handled kind of the communications coming out from NBC around the sports. Um, and so she kind of handled like was the liaison between my VP and myself and then all the different teams and then was feeding me the information. And then I was building things out based on that. Three months into starting with them, her husband had taken a job across the country and she had to leave. And I was like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> a little in internal panic moment. I was like, what do I do? I don't, I work through her for everything. Like absolutely everything I do. I don't even know my boss directly above her. I've spoken to her, but I didn't know her. And I was like, I'm just going to be left high and dry. And I, I was I absolutely panicked at first, but I was like, okay, I can do this. I can figure this out. I knew they weren't going to hire someone for a long time. And it was a huge, 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 huge one opportunity, but two learning curve. Not only was I basically forced to take over her role, I cannot tell you how amazing it ended up being. I learned so much. And yes, at times I was losing my mind. I was like, I don't know the right person to go to. I don't even know who to ask. I don't know but I just would just do my homework. I would just try to figure it out. And I would not go to my VP unless I had to, and I could not get the answer to what I needed. And it just helped me grow so much and helped me become so independent in my role. And then I was able to take on more things. I wasn't just email marketing. I was also handling the digital marketing and all these things. And then we were hiring people that were reporting to me. So it was kind of this, it really helped launch my career with them in a sense. Um, because I was forced into these roles and as scary as it can be, it can be the best thing that ever happens to you. So my advice there is don't panic, just stick it out and you, you can make it work and just do everything you can, um, to learn and to grow in that role. And, and it works out because I ended up staying there for a long time. I ended up, we built out this beautiful team and, um, we became a part of something really big and, um, I just grew a lot as a person in that role and, and what I had done in those years there. Um, but again, I was in email and I was like, is this really the world I'm in? Like, I, it, it's weird because it's not something I was super passionate about, but it's something I realized I was good at. And I realized like, there's not a lot of people that can handle working with HTML. It's a very tedious, very, very tedious thing. Um, and working with data and being hands-on in the data and and things like that. That's not something people are like, super excited about most of the time. Um, but I realized it was something that I was good at and it was hard to find, honestly, especially at my age, it was hard to find people who did that kind of stuff. Um, so I found myself in a really unique position. Um, and I, I, I stuck it out. I did, <laughs> like I said, I kept, um, you know, we kept hiring people underneath me. I had four direct reports at one point and then COVID hit. And they all got fired. <laughs> and oh my gosh. <laughs> I was alone again. So it was like every time I would be coming out of a leave and I wasn't building emails, then I'd go back and I'd be building oh them again. God. So, you know, that happens. It's you, the world's unpredictable, as we know. We've all been through COVID. It's <laughs> it was time without sports and I worked in sports. So you really just have to kind of stay on your toes and figure it out as you go. But um, you know, we we made it work and um I finally I feel like I'm in a place where I did work out of out of the weeds. And even in my current role, I go on it back and forth a couple times too. 
um, which we can, we'll get to, but yeah, I think NBC was just a huge time of growth for me. That was not only I grew as a person, but I also grew as a leader and became a manager. And I learned to start managing people because I went from being a coordinator there to a manager there. Um, that and is... I had a really great boss who just was brilliantly smart. And I learned so much from her. Um, and we ended up building a really good relationship together. That is an incredible story. And uh, I love kind of how you shared that, you know, it was unplanned that your boss was going to quit and that was going to kind of launch this incredible growth you had at the company. Mm -hmm. And I think when, you know, a situation that like that has happened to you or does happen to you, I think your instinct is to kind of, okay, maybe rely on the VP a little bit more. Like, I don't know things. So like, let me like go to like her to him. And I like how you mentioned like, well, I did my best to figure out as much as I possibly could on my own before going to like my new boss and asking for help. I think that is so such an underrated skill of an employee it is it is right um that's something we really struggle with in the in, in my field I mean in general I guess right now it's, it's something we've noticed a lot with some of the younger kids now is they're so quick to come to their manager and ask a question that they could have googled mm -hmm. or they could have figured out on their own um and that's part of that independence it's, it's instead of relying on someone else you could figure it out yourself and then you're going to grow from that. So I think that's something that's been missing, unfortunately, in the in the last couple of years, I would say, um, just people being able to take the responsibility on their own and, and go out and like, I still to this day, if I can't find the answer, I'll ask, but unless, like, I have to be like desperate to ask someone <laughs> a question. There's, um, there's like yeah. a good balance between, you obviously want to ask for help if you don't know something, you know, 100%. great to ask questions, but then there's also... Like it's, you learn so much by figuring things out on your own versus just asking the mm -hmm. question. And also sometimes your boss has to figure it out too. Like they might not even yeah. know, like sometimes if it's like something like, oh, this software, whatever is like glitching out. Well, like maybe you, like you can go like chat with support or like troubleshoot it. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, yeah, you could go ask mm -hmm. your boss, but your boss probably gonna have to do that. Might have to do the troubleshooting too. And so, yeah, I think, and I've, I've noticed that too. And I'll never forget one of my very first, I think my very, my very, very first marketing internship, my boss showed me this chart about like a good, something about a good employee. And it was like, your job, you know, is to, if there's a problem, instead of going, you know, reporting it to your boss is like, identify the problem research the problem, solve the problem, and then loop your boss in and be like, hey, by the way, like this, you know, glitch happened or this was mm -hmm. an issue happened, but like, this is how I solved it. Just like want to loop you in. And that's kind of a yep. better way than like going to them and being like, help me, help me, help me, help me. Right. It also proves that you did the work yourself mm -hmm. and it shows that they can trust you to take things on by yourself and handle it. So um, it's a win-win. And honestly, it feels better when you figure it out by yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it truly and does. You learn so much. And that's like your example of being thrown into a leadership position. I feel this like similarly as, you know, entrepreneur figuring everything out. I've just, mm -hmm. my growth has accelerated so much than it would have in another role because there's something to be safe for like learning everything on your own that gives you just so much more knowledge and experience. Yep, absolutely. Okay, Laura. So now we're kind of getting to where you currently are now at NFL. So mm -hmm. as you mentioned, you were at NBC Sports for four or five years. Uh, at yep. the end of your time there, you were email marketing manager. And now moving over into NFL, you have a little bit of a different role. So can you tell me about it, please? Absolutely. Um. So, you know, I, I was very happy at NBC. I had this fantastic team. We created this like family together. I still talk to a lot of them to this day. Um, they're really good friends of mine. So I wasn't actively looking, but I just happened to be on LinkedIn. I saw this role with the NFL and it was, um, at the time it was called senior manager of fan journey, something like that, like life cycle journey, something, <laughs> something along those lines. It was very long and hard to remember. Um, and I'm reading the description and I'm like, wow, this is almost my exact job, like to a T to down to some of the platforms we were working in. Like we were working with a company called Movable Inc. And I had a ton of experience with them and they were working with that. And it was like, oh, it's a plus if you have Movable Inc. And then this and that. And I was like, this is my exact job. And I was like, this is, but with the NFL, like the league. And I was like, you know, I love my job here, but also this is an opportunity I cannot pass up. I have to at least apply is kind of what I told myself. There's no harm in applying. It's also like, it's great experience even if you just go through the interview process and you don't get the job it's just good experience um so I said there's no harm in applying I applied um 
I actually thought I didn't get the job because it had been about a month and I hadn't heard anything. It was just crickets. And I was like, okay, at least I tried, you know. Um, and then about a month after I had got the a recruiter from the NFL, that's generally with the bigger companies, it goes through the recruiters first. They took a look at your resume. If it fits w- at all within the job description, they'll reach out, learn a little bit more about you. And then if you, they still think you're a fit, then they'll pass you on to the hiring manager. Um, so that's kind of why it had taken so long. I'm sure the NFL gets lots of applications for all the different roles. So had you followed, um, had you followed up? Cause I know sometimes girls get frustrated during this like long process or if they follow mm-hmm. up and they get ghosted, were you like reaching out to them and were they responding or was it just like dead silence for a I, month? I didn't, it was dead silence. Um, I had applied through the NFL's platform. So there wasn't exactly a contact. I knew who was hiring. So I had seen the post on LinkedIn but I figured he was probably getting hounded by people and I didn't want to be one of those people. So I tried to be patient. Um, and you know, when I was at NBC, I was going through tons of resumes and we had that super long process. I knew it was a long process. So I didn't want to annoy. I didn't, I don't want to say annoy, but I didn't want, I just tried to be as patient as possible. It, and it was really hard. And sometimes it's always going to be hard. Just the waiting game is, is the hardest. And, um, just know that it sometimes it really does take a long time because especially with bigger companies, the amount of applications they get is insane. So for them to funnel through them and then find time that works for everybody to meet with them, it's, it's a long process. So just try to be, I would say, just try to be as patient as possible. Um, and honestly, it was like a huge surprise when the recruiter finally reached out and I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this could happen. Um, and I had a great conversation with her Um you know, my biggest fear with this job too, was that it was in New York city. Um, cause I live up in like Fairfield County, Connecticut. And so it's, uh, it's not exactly close. Um, and from, you know, from COVID, I, for NBC, I had been working from home almost on a permanent basis. So I knew this would be a shift to going in office in New York city. But again, I was like, this is an opportunity I can't say no to. So I proceeded with the interviews. Um, you know, in the first, very first interview, I had a great conversation with the hiring manager. Um, it was very clear that I was doing the exact same thing for, for my job, my current job. Um, the only thing that had, that this role had that I did not have experience with was, um, was an app. And um, so this role was also working on what they call their NFL event uh, event-based app. So it's called NFL One Pass. And it's the app that fans use to actually go to NFL events throughout the year. The international games kick off Pro Bowl, Super Bowl, um, all the different drafts, all the different fan events. Um, so this was an opportunity not only to do what I was doing at NBC, do it at a much larger scale, but also work on a new thing, learn an app, and also go to those events and explore and start to travel, which is not something I'd never done before. Um, I had never even been out of the country before I started this job. Um, and within my first couple of months, I was in London working the London games. So um, I thought it was a really good opportunity and I could not say no to it. So, um, you know, I went through the process. It was a much longer process. Um, I think I interviewed with probably six different people up to the SVP. Um, so, you know, I, it was intimidating, but I, I knew I had the experience and I knew what I was talking about. So I, at the same time, I wasn't scared. Um, and it was really just refreshing to just have conversations with these people and, um, you know, not being super intimidated. So, um, overall the process was really good. Uh, and they ultimately obviously offered me the job. And, um, so I started back in July of 2021 and even since then it's been, a huge, huge, huge change. So, um, like I said, my, my job title was something completely different and that's because my team is something completely different than what it was when I started. Um, my VP was newer. He was only in, I think his second year with the league at that point. Um, and he just had this huge vision for the team and what he wanted to do with it. And we are in the midst of it right now and we've done tremendous things already. So, um, I'm actually now, our team is now referred to as the fan engagement marketing team. So uh, the way the marketing works at the NFL, is there's three tiers of marketing. My tier is called marketing science and strategy. So within my team, obviously we have the marketing science team. Um, we have the consumer insights team and we have my team, which is the fan engagement team um, within my team. So originally when I started, 
I was just handling all the one, what we call the one-to-one -one communications out of league, which is email, SMS, um, you know, anything along those channels and then the app itself, which we were communicating to fans on site at these events with. Um, what the goal of this team was to build it into a true fan journey management. Um, so what that means is for every temple event, for every one of our products, so NFL plus, um, fantasy, like all those different things, um, even some higher priority campaigns like NFL flag. Um, basically, we now have built out an entire team focused on the fan journey. So what that means is they take every event. So let's use draft as an example, because we just had the draft. They built out journeys for there's three, I would say there's three different journeys. There's your local component and your national component. Within the local component, it's your fans that you want to get to go to the draft. You're trying to convince them to, to sign up to go, to sign up for the app that I will work on. And then there's your fans who said they are going. How are we communicating to them? What do you need to know before you go to the event? Here's where you can stay at a hotel. Here's what you need to know before you attempt. And then our national is just general awareness. You know, the the draft is coming up. Here are the days it's on. Um, you know, where can you watch it? Um, just getting fans excited about it is really kind of the goal of that journey. So their team builds out those extensive journeys, presents it to my team. And then my team, I actually have moved into a role now where instead of building out campaigns, um, I actually handle what we call the content mapping. So they'll say, okay, I want to send an email here, a push notification here, a text here, here are all the audiences they're going to, here's what we want it to be focused around. I then take those and I cut what we call content map against them. So I say, okay, for this email and this audience, I want to do this, this, and this. And for this SMS with this audience, I want to do this. And I build out the entire map for those journeys. And then I present that to our creative team and our creative team built that out. And then we completely build the whole journey out and we deploy them. Um, so it's really changed from when I started <laughs> at first yeah. time. It was just like, if someone asked us to send something, we would just do it. Um, but now we have all the science and the data behind it and these, and these holistic looks at each event and each product and everything. Um, so it's been, we just started it a year ago. Um, the draft, we started with the draft last year. And this, so this was our second time through the draft. And, you know, it's, it's definitely a learning curve, but it's so exciting to see, you know, where we've come from where we started. Um, it's definitely been a learning curve for everyone. So you have to, you know, be flexible at times and just be willing to learn and reach out if you need help or if you have questions. And um, it's just been really cool to see where it's gone in just my couple years that I've been here. Yeah, that sounds, I think it's also really fun to build something from the ground up. Really challenging, mm -hmm. but that's kind of been consistent in your career, it looks like, of just like figuring things out and doing brand new things that you haven't done before. And definitely hearing that, you know, all the work that goes into these like push notifications and texts that you receive as mm -hmm. consumers, very interesting to hear the other side of it and all of the thought and strategy that goes into that. I'm also really curious. I know that you mentioned that you edit a lot of resumes on the side and you, you give a lot of mm -hmm. feedback. And I know now your role at the NFL is obviously you know, dream job for so many people out there that would love to have a career path like yours or working at NB, NBC in sports or just like, like I mentioned, sports in general, like so many people want to work in it. It's super, super competitive. So do you have any advice for resumes or any like mistakes that you see a lot or anything that you feel like you, is it really important for someone that's trying to enter this industry or trying to grow in it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Number one mistake, which I see more than I wish, is spelling mistakes on resumes. Um, mm -hmm. 100% make sure you reread them over and over and over again. Have other people read them. I mean, just do your due diligence and just read, read them over because that to me right there, I mean, working in a field that can be so tedious and the tiniest little error can screw something up, that's something we look for. So as soon as we see that, we're kind of like, oh, not great. Um so I definitely recommend rereading and rereading over and over again, because that definitely stands out. I've even had a, a situation where I got a, a, a woman had a good interview with me. Um, and, you know, we were still considering some other candidates and they followed up with a thank you note, which a lot of times get emailed, you, no matter how you want to do it, handwritten, email, whatever works for you, LinkedIn. Um, I recommend doing it, just showing your appreciation and then further showing that you're now that you've learned more about the job, you're even more excited about it. Highly, highly recommend. That's just 
another way to stand out against the crowd. Um, but I had even received one, one time, and I still laugh about to this day that I was working in NBC Sports at the time, and it said, "Thank you so much for you know the time the time we had and the conversation we had." Blah blah. I'm so excited, um, and I was like, "Wow, she hand wrote this note. This is so nice and it stood out to me." But then she ended it with, "I'm excited for this role at CBS Sports," and I was like, "No, oh. no." I was like, "Man, that you stood out to me for a second, and then you just oh. ruined it right there." <laughs> so. Again, triple checking your work, making sure you're rereading things and um, just don't silly mistakes like that could cost you the job. So, um, you know, just really being conscious and and not rushing through things like, yes, yeah, sometimes you might want to rush because the job just opened and blah, blah, blah. you're better off taking your time and making sure you're not making silly mistakes because um, that's that's what stands out. And that's unfortunately what sometimes makes you lose it. So um, outside of that, you know, I think at the league, it's, it's tough. So it's a, like I said, it's a long process you go through. Um, you know, it's, it's funny how our, our, my team. So when I started, there was actually last season, it was just me, my whole marketing team, my whole one-to-one comms team was me. It was only me for a whole season. And we, um, which was awful like really bad at times. It was the amount of communications we send out one person for the entire league doing that. is not ideal, but we had a situation again where I found myself that my boss left Mm. and I was kind of left high and dry. Um, So I knew I just had to stick it out. And again, huge learning experience that helped me advance even more and and learn things today that I wouldn't have known otherwise. So um, ended up being a really great thing. But what, what I'm leaning to is I now am on a team, just my team alone, my small team within the fan engagement team is four people, five people, including our project manager. Um, and then we added on the journey team and then we added on our creative team. So our, my team went from a team of my full fan engagement team went from a team, probably like six people to a team of over 30. Um, so we have this massive team now. And so obviously we have just done a lot of hiring. Um, And I will say a lot of that came from different places. There's, you know, one of my direct reports right now was actually someone I had previously worked with at NBC. Um, I knew she had a fantastic skill set. I knew she was, would absolutely kill it in this role. So when the role became available, I immediately, I said, can I reach out to her? So sometimes there are situations like that. Then there's other situations where they could come through LinkedIn and they just reached out because they had some sort of common connection and, um, you know, made themselves stand out and they didn't go the traditional route. It's not always the traditional route that um, will get you the job, but anything that you can find, I recommend it. Um, so I would say definitely what stands out to us, you know, the way it works is recruiting goes through it, obviously, then comes to us. Um, you know, obviously we're looking for those the typical things, you know, with this job makes sense for you in the first place. We're looking to see if you have relevant skills, but we're not going to say, okay, immediately you don't have email marketing, you know, you don't have five years of experience. You only have four and we asked for five. Like that's not something we're going to immediately strike you out on. We're just looking to see that again, you're willing to learn. That's huge, huge, huge. I, I recommend everyone speak to that on their interviews. Um, like, oh, maybe this isn't, ex- I don't have Photoshop skills, but I am so excited to learn. I want to, I've been Googling it. I've been, you know, talk about some, something you Googled about Photoshop and you're like, oh, I just learned you could do this. Like show that you're passionate about it. Um, I think the passion and the willing to learn, at least for me, when I'm hiring someone, that's what stands out to me. Because I can't tell you how many times I've hired someone that has the skill set or claims to have the skill set And then I hire them and they either don't or it just doesn't work out. They don't have the work ethic. And, you know, working for a league like this, we are constantly busy year round. Like I said earlier, we're technically in the off season, but we're not. You know, the draft is another Super Bowl for us. So um, and we're in the middle of schedule release right now. So what I'm looking for is just the dedication, the passion and the willingness to learn, because I think that's something that's kind of hard to come by nowadays. Um, so even if someone may have a better skill set than you on paper, but you have proven to me through your written work and through your interview that you are so passionate and you want this job, I'm probably going to go with you over someone who just had some bullet points written down on a piece of paper. Um, that to me is what stands out. 
and that's that might be a personal preference but I just think in the field I work in you're not going to find people that have exactly what you need it's very rare it's a niche field um so I'd rather hire someone that's willing to learn it That is, I think, a very, very, I mean, we're talking about lots of underrated skills, and I think we've had a theme throughout mm-hmm. this episode, but I give that I give that same advice, so I love that you shared that, because, I mean, being highly coachable, being willing to learn, being curious, mm-hmm. I think, are your biggest assets when you're just starting out in your career. If you, you know, like you mentioned, like, a year or two of experience, like, here or there, is it going to be, like, the end-all, be-all for you getting a role or not? Correct. And it's so important to be constantly conveying that in your application and in your interviews and also showing it. I feel like, Laura, you showed it previously. We talked about an interview for like the sports betting where you didn't know terminology and you showed up the next day knowing mm-hmm. the terminology. That's how you also show that, not just tell that in the interview, but actually show that and show up and be like, I'm really willing to learn. I'm willing to put in the work and I'm going to show you that. I think yep. that helps so much. It does. It definitely does. All right, Laura. Well, this has been an incredible episode. I feel like we have gone over so many actionable items on starting a career in sports marketing and overcoming, you know, imposter syndrome, growing, learning. So thank you so much for coming on Marketing Girly and sharing your story. This has been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it.